So now that we've listed polls, we want to uh, first of all get the general poll information and display this here. So we're just going to output the poll question here uh, and then look after that at dealing with outputting the particular choices uh, relating to this poll. So let's stay on this page, a uh, poll here. We've got uh, all the information that we need to actually replace. So we've done our markup. Uh, now's the time to actually start to create the queries. So let's close off index and let's close off index. We don't really need that anymore. And under poll.php, let's start to make this a little bit more dynamic. So at the top, we want to obviously require in our initialization file. So I'm going to do a require once on app init.php. And then down here, we're going to start to uh, do a few checks. The first thing we need to check is if the actual poll ID has been specified. Because if we just go through to poll.php, poll.php we um, you know we, we need a poll ID to be able to display poll information simple as that uh, and the reason we get an error here is because of this so inside of the uh, condition um, we basically want to check if something isn't set and that something is the dollar underscore get super global and the poll key that basically means this here um, Oh, sorry, we've called this ID when we probably should have called it. Let's just refactor this poll. You can leave it as ID as you want, but I think poll is a little bit more descriptive. So let's just go back to the index and click on one of these. So we now got poll equals one. So uh, we want to make sure that's set. If it's not set, uh, all I'm going to do is just redirect back to the index page. Um, there's probably better ways to actually uh, structure moving around your application this is probably not the best one but for now just because we're learning we can you know just get away with uh, doing a header redirect um, you may even want to display a message saying can't find that poll or please specify a poll ID or something like that anyway otherwise we uh, have this um, key available this key in this this value in this key here so we can just store that so I'm going to say ID equals dollar underscore get poll like that now because we're going to be outputting this to the page and we are going to be using prepared statements and we'll talk about them later when we actually query um, in this case um, we may want to output the poll ID and we're going to actually do that down further down the page inside of the form so what we want to do is make sure that this is cast to an integer and that just involves adding this at the start of this variable and that basically means that no text can be included in here or anything um, so we're, we're sort of safe to output this to the page pretty much so what we want to do now is get general poll information so I'll just put a little comment here get general poll information and this involves uh, preparing a statement selecting specific information that we need and then executing that and grabbing the object back so it's pretty much all like we've done with the query but we're going to be using prepared statements so i'm going to call this poll query and this is going to be db and this time we're going to use the prepare method not the direct query method and let's pull this down just for readability so we're going to select id question from polls but this time we want to select it where the ID matches the ID that's been supplied here. So we say where ID equals, and then we, then we give a placeholder. So we use a colon and then a name identifying the placeholder. What you might usually be used to doing, or if you've not learned before, sometimes you would just insert the ID like this. If this wasn't escaped, and if this was a query, you've opened yourself up to SQL injection which is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. Either way, we're going to prepare this statement, which we've done here. Remember, we still need the um, the between poll starts and poll ends. So we're going to say and date now between, let's do that in caps, between starts and ends just to make sure that we're not trying to be, uh, no one's trying to access a poll that doesn't yet uh, or hasn't yet started. So what we're going to do now is down here, we're going to execute that. So we say poll query 
execute no need to reassign this to a variable like we've done here now inside of execute we create an array uh, depending on which php version you're using by the way you might want to use this array but i'm using uh, a version that supports short syntax and here we need to specify the value for the placeholders that we've given in the prepared statement in this case it's just poll so here we're going to say poll and that's going to uh, contain the value id here so this is just as good as saying id equals one that's pretty much what this is doing so now what we want to do is store this in a variable called poll which we can use throughout our page and i'm going to say poll query and that's going to fetch object we've already seen this method in use on the poll index page so we've now got this poll information let's actually just do a print r on poll like so let's go ahead and refresh and there we go what do you think of the new website that's a poll one let's just switch this over to poll id of two and there we go we get the do you like polls information so we've got this information so we now know that we can actually output this down here so let's do that now so we're going to say php and let's say echo poll question like that so let's refresh here and there we go do you like polls and what do you think of the new website now just uh, a little bit of uh, advice or a little bit of warning i'm not escaping anything that's being outputted um, if your data in your database is being inserted by in fact even if it's not uh, you should escape on output i'm not going to cover that really in this video because to escape properly is a little bit beyond the scope of this but when, whenever you're outputting anything stored in a database uh, make sure you escape it so uh, please bear that in mind and go ahead and research into properly escaping um, with uh, with php so we've got our poll question here we've output our poll question but um, what happens if a poll doesn't actually exist remember we're checking whether this isn't available and we're redirecting to index.php but what if it's poll id of three well in this case what we're doing is we're generating an error here because we're trying to access a property that doesn't exist from this poll variable here so we need to create some kind of check down here to check if that poll actually exists or not so we'll do this before we even start to generate this markup here there's no need to do that otherwise so we're going to uh, open up a uh, php tag and close a php tag and we're going to say if not poll and down there we're going to do something and then otherwise we want to output all of this and then down here we want to do an end if and we'll just indent this as well so if the poll doesn't exist we're just going to say that poll doesn't exist like so and when we refresh there we go so poll 2 works still and poll 1 works excellent so we've done that but we now want to output the actual um, questions or oh, the choices rather sorry because we've got our list of hard coded choices here but that's not really good enough so what we want to do now is we want to get all of our poll choices and we need to do this down here we need to do a couple of checks later on uh, once a user has actually voted but let's just output the choices first of all so down here we're going to say get poll choices and we need to do another query here so we say poll query or we could probably say choices query that might make a little bit more sense so choices query and this is again a prepared statement because we're going to be inserting uh, variables into this so we're going to say select now this is going to be a little bit different because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be joining the choices table the polls choices table um, we can't just pull from the polls table because this doesn't contain the choices so we need to join these on sounds a little bit more difficult than it actually is uh, but follow along and it should make a lot of sense so what i'm going to do is when i select now i'm going to explicitly define the um the uh, table name so polls.id so i want the id of the poll polls choices.id as choice id and this basically means from the polls choices table grab me the id but because id and id exist together 
we are going to have a duplicate uh, key here. So we're going to just call this choice ID. Um, what we also want to select here is the name of the choice. So polls choices dot name. So we are selecting this ID here. We're selecting this ID here and this here. But MySQL has no idea where this is coming from. It doesn't know that we have a polls choices table uh, joined where the ID here matches the poll uh, field here. Because remember this equals this. So we need to join that table on. But first we're going to select that from polls but then we're going to join on the separate table. So we're going to do a join polls choices and we need to say which field match which to be able to join that data. And we use the on keyword for that and we say polls.id so the ID here matches this poll field on the polls choices table. So polls.id equals polls choices dot poll and then we're going to say where polls dot id equals poll and uh, we also again need this so we'll just copy and paste that there um, but this time we need to use the and keyword because where and and then we're going to say polls dot starts and polls dot ends Alternatively, you might want to do just one of these checks up here and then, you know, later on. But I'm just going to include these in here anyway, just for clarity. So hopefully that makes sense. Remember, we're selecting from two different tables and we're joining them on these on the fact that these two match. And we're doing an inner join here. So we have left joins, inner joins, etc. So we want to execute this and we'll actually check if it worked. So poll query execute. And inside of here, again, we have our array and poll is going to be ID, much like we did. Um, oops, we've done this on the wrong page. Excellent. So let's move this over to here. There we go. So we know what we mean. We've got uh, this executed again. We're inserting the ID here. Brilliant. So let's go ahead and just refresh here. It looks like we don't have any errors, which is a good. So let's do a print R on poll query fetch object just to see what's come back. We'll only get one result back here. Um, and we get, oops, let's do, oh, sorry, choices, query, like that. There we go. So we should now get just one choice back. There we go. So we get the first choice within that table, within that choice for, for each one. If we were to do a loop on that, we would get all of them. So what we can actually do is extract the choices and put them into their own uh, array. So let's do that now. So let's extract the choices. And we do another while loop, much like we saw on the index page. So we assign each fetched object to an, a variable called row. And we say poll query fetch object. And then we assign these to a, uh, an array called choices, like so. So now when we do a print R on choices, and we could actually wrap these in pre tags like so then we will find we get the following uh okay so let's check that out ah, again that needs to be choices query i'm sure you spotted that so there we go so we've got three choices as we'd expect we've got the id which is the id of the poll we don't really need this to be honest we've got the choice id which we know and then we've got the name of the choice so we can now actually loop through these and now I'll put them down here where the options are. So we're getting a little bit closer to this being complete. So let's get rid of this here and let's go down and we'll actually output these. So we obviously need to check if there are actually any choices available first of all, because if there aren't, there's, there isn't any point in actually outputting them. So what we want to do is just above the form, because there's no point of even having a form otherwise, 
we want to do a little bit of a check and we want to say if uh, not empty and we want to check if the choices are not empty we want to create this form otherwise let's just indent that we want to end if there so if there are no choices we want to say there are no choices right now that's probably very rare but in the case you do launch a poll that doesn't have any choices attached the user will just get this message um, now let's just take a look at this so let's maybe create a poll 3 that obviously doesn't exist at the moment let's create that inside of here so we'll just say this is a test poll and let's go ahead and start that now I'm going to end that now and just alter the date in here okay so that's our poll and you can see that we don't get the form uh, we get the message that we just output okay so we've covered that let's go back to poll 2 and let's output these choices because we know that these choices now exist or these options now exist so uh, inside of here we've got a polls options um, div and we want to get rid of these and we want to loop on this so here we do for each choices as choice and we obviously end our for each just there and we indent that okay so now things get a little bit more complicated not too complicated remember the value here relates to the actual choice ID so we can just output this here we've already seen an, an example of this so choice and remember we call that choice ID um, this ID here basically just needs to be an incrementing number from one to however many choices there are so in this case we just need to output the index of this loop or this array sorry so in this case we just say index choice so here instead of that hard-coded one we can echo the index and that will just mean that for each loop this will be one two three four and we do the same for this here so they basically match up the choices um, so again echo index now obviously what's left to do is actually output the choice itself so here remember this is choice name like so so when we refresh now we've got the actual choice name here um, but if we inspect this you'll also see that we have we just pull this up we've got for each poll option c0 because uh, arrays are zero indexed we've got a value of four for i love polls so that relates to i love polls id of four so we know which choice to uh, assign to that user we've got a value of five here c1 we should have C2 here and the value of 6 there. So this all looks like it's uh, sort of working together. The only thing we need to do now is rep replace the poll ID on this hidden field here. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, here we just need to replace this with... Now what we can do is we can either take it from up here, which we escaped, or we could take it directly from this choice array because we know that for each choice... Um, or for the choices we have this uh, available for now just to keep things simple I'm going to echo the ID up here might look a little bit confusing uh, but there we go it does the job so if we just view the page source to make things easy we've now got a poll with the ID of two as well as our options that we've already seen there we go let's switch to poll one just to check it and there we go everything looks cool so that's basically we've outputted everything now what we need to do in the next part is focus on the actual ability to click on submit answer and actually cast a poll vote.